Some babies born with ambiguous genitalia, that is, genitals that are not obviously male or female, are forced to undergo unnecessary medical interventions. Some parents and guardians of intersex children may be pressured into agreeing to normalizing babies as this is made a requirement before they can obtain identification documents for their children. This obviously happens before that intersex person can decide for him or her or themselves these medical interventions. And so these procedures violate the rights of persons subjected to such procedures when they occur without their full, free, and informed consent. This is only one of the many issues faced by intersex persons who actually face numerous human rights violations solely because they are intersex. Intersex is the umbrella term used to describe people whose biology doesn't fit what's traditionally considered as male or female. Meaning, intersex people are born with varying sex characteristics, including sexual anatomy, reproductive organs, hormonal patterns, and chromosome patterns. Solely for being different from what's considered as normal, intersex people encounter hardships. In parts of the world, there are reports of intersex infants and children who are subjects of infanticide or murdered before they reach the age of one year old. Cases of infanticide have been documented in East and Southern Africa and South Asia. Genital mutilation is also carried out on many intersex children. This is to make the genitals of intersex children conform to binary notions of male or female. Mutilations have been documented in East Africa, for example. Sadly, even with these difficulties, intersex people also have a hard time getting support. For example, they encounter discrimination in healthcare. Because their conditions are not well understood by medical professionals, their health needs may not be properly satisfied. There are also limited research on the long-term health outcomes and needs of intersex people, and lacking standards of care that are respectful of the rights of intersex people. Intersex people also face issues related to their legal recognition, including registration at birth. Intersex people's sex and gender markers are often dictated by others at the time they were born. This is often based only on the genitalia seen on them. When they grow up and identify differently, they have to face a legal system that may not be friendly to them. With this, intersex people are forced to become invisible, and this limits their access to justice and remedies. For example, they are unable to go after people who mutilated their bodies as infants. Fortunately, the intersex movement emerged starting in the 1990s. In 1993, Feminist biologist Anne Fausto Sterling published articles in the Sciences and the New York Times to deal with the basic fact that intersex exists. At that time too, Intersex Society of North America was founded to highlight intersex issues, particularly experiences on sex reassignment in infancy, medically induced shame, and the disinterest of care providers in the intersex experience. By 2001, the intersex rights movement has been firmly established to make people understand intersex conditions as human rights issues. In the Philippines, intersex people have actually been recognized by the courts. This is thanks to intersex person Jeff Kagandahan, who in 2003 filed a petition to correct the entries in his birth certificate. See, Kagandahan was assigned female at birth, but he developed male characteristics while growing up because of an intersex condition called congenital adrenal hyperplasia. And so, he asked to change his name as well as his sex from female to male. Kagandahan's case reached the Supreme Court of the Philippines which, in 2008, sided with him. In its decision, the highest court stated that intersex people have the right to determine their gender classification once they reach the age of consent. But even with the Supreme Court's decision, there are still no laws that can help make the lives of intersex Filipinos better. For example, to change their names and their sex and gender markers in legal documents, they still have to undergo medical tests and then file petitions in courts. These cost money, and money is something not necessarily readily available to many. The pioneering intersex organization in the Philippines was established in 2017. Intersex Philippines is now both a support group of intersex Filipinos, as well as their loved ones, and an advocacy group making people understand that intersex conditions are human rights issues. It is true that there have been changes helping intersex people. Medical professionals are becoming more aware of intersex cases. So a growing number can now openly discuss with parents and guardians and even patients about the right courses of actions to take. Medical associations are now reconsidering the practice of unnecessarily mutilating intersex infants' bodies. And laws are getting changed to become more inclusive of intersex people, from adding I in legal documents, and to allowing intersex people to eventually choose their names, sex, and gender markers. But there's more to be done. 
it's important for the issues of intersex people to be given attention. It is always good to know. So let's start the discussions.